Hello, I'm Milas Transit Elucidation. I'm a chemistry graduate, and now I would like to try again explaining data stone parts with the chemistry knowledge that I have. The stone war is pretty much over now, with Hyoga and Homura captured and imprisoned. That means, from Kingdom of Science, there is no casualty, but from Sukasa's Kingdom of Might, there is one, and it's himself. With peace returning to both sides by ceasefire, Kingdom of Science starts doing science things again, now in Sukasa's former territory. One of the things Senku does is making superglue as medical adhesive. Not because it will save Sukasa because his lung is beyond saving now, but because it buys extra time for Senku to put Sukasa in cold sleep. The topic I want to discuss in this video is the production of cyanoacrylate, usually known as superglue and used by Senku as medical adhesive. Senku said that there's gotta be someone who gets it for modern era. The muscle heads from Sukasa's Kingdom of Might will not get it, but at least there's me. Although Senku didn't take his time enough to explain it, so I have to dig deeper on my own. Let's put what Senku said into chemical structures just like in my video for episode 15. The top part is fine, but the bottom right part is kinda messy in my opinion. Vinegar plus chlorine with a dash of sulfur gives us chloroacetate or chloroacetic acid. Vinegar is acetic acid and the structure is like that. Throw in some sodium hydroxide and we got sodium chloroacetate. Get it to react with cyanide made from blood and iron, it makes cyanoacetate or cyanoacetic acid. I think Sand could skip a minor step there. The reaction with cyanide makes sodium cyanoacetate, then the sodium cyanoacetate is reacted with acid to make cyanoacetic acid. And once you get some cyanoacetate, and after getting cut by again, Senku said to add some alcohol there to make ethyl cyanoacetate, then add some formaldehyde to that. And you get superglue to seal wounds, which is ethyl cyanoacrylate. Before getting into the details of the reactions, I want to comment on this glassware setup for distillation. First, why is Senku still using that pack for water cooling instead of using proper Libic condenser? Is it because Senku didn't want Kaseki to do extra work, or because it's difficult to make even for glass blowers, or... Or simply both of them are busy creating other stuff? I don't know. Second, the connection here is... sus. Normally, that part uses adapter. Third, heating using open flame for organic synthesis. I think that's also sus. Although in this case, Senku probably doesn't have the alternative for this, which is hot plates. Normally, open flames are avoided in organic chemistry labs because organic chemistry labs have, obviously, organic solvents, and most of them are flammable. Perhaps the solvent Senku is boiling here is water, which is fine. I wonder which step that is. Okay, now let's get more into the detail of the reaction. There are 5 steps here. In the first step, one of the hydrogen in acetic acid is substituted with a chlorine atom. I believe this goes to radical mechanism, especially seeing that historically, the reaction proceeds under sunlight, although here the reaction this time uses sulfur as catalyst. The chlorine-chlorine bond is weak, so it dissociates into chlorine radicals. The chlorine radical then attacks the hydrogen in acetic acid. It is possible for the reaction to continue attacking the hydrogen atoms, so we have unwanted dichloro and trichloroacetic acid. The way to remove it is not by distillation, because the boiling point of those three is too close to each other. Instead, it's removed using crystallization, because monochloroacetic acid's melting point is higher. So if we start with a molten mixture, the one that is crystallized first will be the monochloroacetic acid. Oh yeah, I also found Hazel Camp's video about this step, and only this step, unfortunately. Next is chloroacetic acid reaction with sodium hydroxide, forming sodium chloroacetate and water. This is an ordinary example of acid-base reaction. Acid plus base makes salt and water. That was fast. Next step is sodium chloroacetate and sodium cyanide reacting into sodium cyanoacetate. Then it was acidified so it forms the acid version the cyanoacetic acid. 
This reaction is a case of nucleophilic substitution. Chlorine is a good living group, so it can be substituted with a nucleophile or base. And this time it's cyanide ion. The chlorine is kicked out simultaneously as cyanide connects with the molecule. After that, the sodium cyanoacetate is reacted in acid-base reaction, just like in the step before, but the opposite way. Previously, it used sodium hydroxide as base. Now it uses acid. I think there is one possible question that you may ask here. Why do we need the acid-base reaction twice? Isn't it a waste of chemicals, reacting with a base and then with acid? Well, we need to take the roundabout path. Because if we directly reacted sodium cyanide with fluoroacetic acid, which is well an acid, it will form hydrogen cyanide, which is poisonous and also gaseous. So it escapes the liquid mixture and kills you. Also, another thing in this step, Senku said the sodium cyanide is made of blood and iron. Uh, what? For my digging, the thing that was made with blood and iron and potash is actually Prussian blue which is a pigment with iron and cyanide inside it. It was made in 18th century. However, Prussian blue is not the best at providing cyanide ions, because the cyanides are bound to iron too strongly. Instead, you want sodium cyanide, which was made historically with combinations of charcoal, ammonia, and sodium. Making sodium should be pretty similar to how to make magnesium, like in season 2 episode 2, that is by electrolysis. Just change the bitter with regular sodium chloride. The step after that is the reaction between cyanoacetic acid and ethanol to make ethyl cyanoacetate. This is an esterification reaction, and I hope you remember that word somewhere, because that means that you have watched my episode 15 explanation. In that episode 15 video, I explained that esterification is one of nucleophilic acyl substitutions, and there were two other reactions of that kind before in that video. This reaction between cyanoacetic acid and ethanol is an esterification reaction, which is also a nucleophilic acid substitution reaction. The nucleophile is even the same. The last step is reaction between ethyl cyanoacetate with formaldehyde into the final product ethyl cyanoacrylate. For this reaction, the hydrogen attached to the carbon between the cyanide and the ester can be easily removed, forming anolate. This anolate then can attack the carbon in formaldehyde, which is partially positively charged, so a new carbon-carbon bond forms. This is followed with removal of one hydrogen and one hydroxide. That's how cyanoacrylate glue was synthesized. How about when it's used? When it's used, the cyanoacrylate molecules become one big molecule similar to a long chain composed of smaller identical links. This process is called polymerization, and the repeating small units are called monomers. Moisture or water molecule from air can kickstart the process, and it continues until the molecule is big, and that's when the glue is dry. In conclusion, Senku made the superglue ethyl cyanoacrylate from the starting material acetic acid from vinegar in 5 steps. Step 1 is a radical substitution reaction. Step 2 is a quick acid-base reaction. Step 3 is a nucleophilic substitution reaction followed with an unmentioned acid-base reaction. Step 4 is an esterification reaction. Step 5 is an anolate reaction. When used, the ethyl cyanoacrylate molecules polymerize, forming a long molecule. That's all I have for now. If you have questions on the part that I haven't explained clearly, do not hesitate to comment your questions below. Like the video if you're satisfied already, and subscribe if you want more videos like this from me. Thanks for watching. I should make the video about Creonics. I don't know stuff until I look up on Wikipedia though.